Hi. How are you? I'm okay, thanks. And you? I'm good. I'm good, thank you. Um, so, where are you from? I'm from Poland. Ah, from Poland, terrific. And um, what time is it in Poland? Mm, 2 p.m. 2 p.m., okay. Very nice. I'm in Buenos Aires, and it is 9 o'clock. Let's see, who just joined us? Philip? Philip, can you hear me? Yeah, my teacher. Yeah, absolutely, I can hear you. Can you hear me well? Yes, I can hear you. Welcome back. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> what have you been doing the past two days? Can you hear me? Can you repeat that? Uh, what have you been up to the past few days? The last few days? Yeah. Right. Oh, not not really, nothing really special, just the same, you know, as usual. Okay. Uh, yeah, my college start again after I have a short meeting, midterm break. Yeah. Actually, today is my first, my first day for my, after the midterm break, yeah. Oh, okay. Very nice. Well, I'm glad that even though school has started, uh, that you're still, you're still with us. Let's see, who else just joined us? Um, Ismail. Hi. Hi. Where are you from? I'm from Barcelona, in Catalonia, Spain. Ah, uh, uh, And... It's my fourth class here in Colingo. Okay, terrific. Um, so, are you a student, or what do you do? Yeah, I'm a student uh, Spanish philology, and I'm a journalist, too. Wow. Um, do you do you do anything with photography, or are you strictly a writer? No, I, I, I can I can do everything, but I, I prefer to write than photo or mm, TV, something like that. Wow, very cool, very cool. Do you have a specific, um, I don't know, do you have a specific genre of journalism? Like, do you like to cover, I don't know, the news that just happened, or do you like to do more investigative reports on things? No, now you you can't choose anything. In there are no many opportunities for choose, and you have okay. to do what they want. I see. All right, great. Um, let's see who else. There's Elson. Is that how I pronounce your name? Yes. Hello. How are you? I'm great, thank you. Um, where are you from? I'm from Albania. All right, all right. Yes. Um, very, very cool. Welcome. Um, I hear Albania is great. Yes. <laughs> I have one friend from Albania. Oh, yes, I know her. <laughs> good, very good. Um, very good. Well, welcome. Are you a student, by the way, or, or yeah. um, you work? Yes, I'm a student. Uh, I study medicine. Oh wow! Okay, that's great. That's great. Is it is it like a requirement um, to speak English at your school or something, or do you do, do you just choose to do it? Uh, no, at school and uh, when I go uh, abroad. Where do you want to go? Um, I don't know. I haven't decided yet. I guess Robert can hear me. Well, 
anyways, guys, let's um let's choose a topic for today. What aspect of grammar um do you guys want to work on? We can look at either list some pronouns or we can do some quizzes. Uh, but I'd like to ask you guys and see what you um, what you guys would like to do. For example, I'm looking at some that's a little conditional. If you guys have any um, any particular subject, please type it into the chat box, and we can um, look at those. You know, actually, Christian, I have you know in like a month ago, I have a chance to translate in Thai to English, but I know I done it pretty bad. But it's just it's not really formal, not really for academic, it's just for personal things, and it's acceptable. You know, it's un understand. But what about you know? I have one sentence that I have to translate in English, but it's so kind of awkward. And what would you do if you're you were a native speaker? You know, what would you change the whole sentence? Okay. Yeah, it's yeah. a foundation. I'm I work not really work, just assistant for the missionary foundation here, the orphan foundation. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and where's the, did you type in the sentence? Oh, here we go. Um, let's see. Very good. Thank you, thank you. So first, first oh, I would say. This is a lot of technical term. It's, it's uh, relate to the law or something. Yep. Um, yeah, it's definitely a complex sentence, um, and maybe we could get, maybe we can just turn this into an exercise and ask the other students here if they just see what they would correct, and then we'll we'll kind of work on this to make it as good as possible. Um, so, can everyone see this this sentence in the chat box? Um, so, how would you guys go about making this better? Does anyone have any ideas? My first thought is to make assets plural, to say money or assets. Um, that just that just sounds better. So money. Yeah, I know. You, you, you don't have to be mind if you just you know you could just change the whole sentence if you want to. I just want to see your opinion on my on my own translation. You know, I didn't make money for this. Just translate for my foundation. Sure. Not formal. Okay. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's just complicated. It's a complicated sentence. That's the first thing that I notice. Is that it's like it has a lot of I don't know. It's complicated. So um, I think what you could do is you could take out that and just say money or assets given and then um, let's see from both testaments or any other acts without a Jesus without a Jesus. Yeah, this is definitely complicated. Money or assets given. Yeah. <laughs> you know I translated in from Thai language and a lot of time that just doesn't make sense because it's a lot of technical term. Yeah. 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 I'm sure. I'm sure. You, you, well, you know, actually, we don't have to go over this. You, you can follow your structure. <laughs> well, I will. I'll copy this and I'll save this for later, and I'll I'll just email you a, a more smooth uh, translation, um, and we'll just I'll just email that to you later. So add me on Google Plus, and I'll email that to you. Okay. Okay, okay, thank you. Very good. All right, well, then let's see. Um, did anyone think of a grammar exercise that we could do? I was thinking maybe we could go over something like um, a, lo a lot of common mistakes that, that people make. So um, I'm going to type in grammar confusables, English grammar confusables. 
Let's see what comes up. Notorious Confusions. Let's see if this is helpful. Um, this could be very confusing. I'm going to share this page. Um, it looks a little basic, but at, on the other hand, it looks like there's some good things here too. So have patience, and I think it's easy, but also other ones that might be really hard. Share this. All right, and I lost. Okay. So here we go. Um, let's have somebody read this first one. Let's have um, Elston. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you go ahead and read the first one and um, and then clarify which correct one? Is okay. Number one. Okay. Select one answer from the choices provided after each sentence. The word you choose should fit the blank in the sentence. I couldn't tell whether she was serious or not. It's the first one. Okay, that's correct. And that's, um, does anyone have any questions? If so, um, you know, go ahead and type it in and I'll, I'll keep an eye on that, um, on the chat box. But yes, it is the first one. Very good. Now let's go to number two, and um, let's see. Uh, Gita, can you hear me? Yes. Can you please do number two? Yes. There are too many possible answers to this question. Is the second one? There are too many. Yes, that's correct. Um, and. It seems like you guys have that as well. If there's any uh, questions, type it in and I'll go back. Uh, but actually, yeah. I have one one really specific question. I okay. The word, yeah, the the word that have the same meaning because synonym, right? What about the word that they, you know, they have the same, how do you say that, the same pronunciation but not the same meaning? They have a specific word to describe this kind of word, right? Yes, they do. Now, this is something I learned in kindergarten. Um, and I'm forgetting now, but I think it's a homophone. There's a homo phone. Because I learned it in the other class, but I forgot now. I want to say it's homophone. Um, and that, that just means that it sounds the same. Um, let's see. A homophone is a word that is pronounced the same, but differs in meaning. So I think that's um, that's the answer to your question. Okay, got it. Thank you. Um, great. Very good. So yes, these are homophones. Um, excellent. And number three, please. Let's see who is next. Um, uh, Ismail. Oh, that's me. Um, who's going to help me with this? Uh, I think that this is the second one. Exactly, because it's a contraction, it's who is. Very good, very good. Uh, number four. Let's see. Luisa, hello. Yes, hi. Hmm. Uh, I read the book, I had a nuclear effect on Emily. First one. Exactly. Effect. And this is, I, I think, one of the harder ones because. Um, no, no, they're just easily confusable, but you're right, it's effect. And effect with an A, 
The second one is um, is the verb. You can say, I'm going to, or like, I was affected by, I don't know, whatever happened. I was affected by the earthquake. Um, and so that's the difference, that the bottom one is a verb, and the first one is, I felt the effects of the earthquake. That's the first one. Oh, so then you're asking, what's peculiar? Peculiar is kind of like a strange, something strange. When something is peculiar, okay. it's just a little odd. Um, unusual. So, yeah, unusual. Exactly. Good. Very good. Uh, let's go on to number five. And that is um, Parves. Parves, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Great, can you do number five? I think these words are interested. I think it's um I think it's uninterested. Um but I want to find I want to give you guys the meaning for disinterested. Um what actually uninterested? Disinterested, I just looked up the definition. It it look it appears correct. So let's see what uninterested is. Disinterested means um, like not feeling any any interest in something, and uninterested seems to be more about the about being concerned with something or interested. I don't know. This is, this is a good question, and I really don't know uh, which one it is. I think it's. Interested or disinterested? This is a confusing one. As of now, I might go with disinterested, but I think it should be. I think it should be disinterested. 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 Huh. Okay. Well, you know what? Let's go on for now because I don't want to dwell on this, but. Um, that's definitely something that we can look at later is really analyze the difference between uninterested and disinterested because that is something that um, I think we all should know, especially me because I've been speaking English my whole life. Very good. Um, well, let's see. Who's next? Uh, this, is, this is Philip. Please, which text? Okay, it's uh, number six. Yep. I am afraid she's going to lose her grandmother's wedding brand. Wedding band. I think it's a uh, second one, but I'm not sure this time because I'm not really got the point of the sentence. Okay, you're right. It is the second one, and. The second one is lose. I'm afraid she's going to lose her grandmother's wedding band. She's gonna forget what, it. Somewhere. What does it mean? <laughs> um, the what does lose mean? The whole sentence doesn't make sense. Wedding wedding band is the music band of of her grandmother's wedding. No, so, that that so is morning. that's confusing. That is confusing. But wedding band is a wedding ring. They call that sometimes they call it a wedding band because it's like a. I don't know what you mean. The, the ring, the ring that putting finger. The yeah, the the actual ring is called a wedding band. Instead of a wedding ring, you, you can call it a wedding band. Okay, and, learn, learn something now. <laughs> yeah, and so the if you're afraid she's going to lose it, you're you know she's wearing it, and you're afraid she's going to lose her grandmother's wedding band. So um, that's what the sentence means. And it's number two. The 
let's go over this word here. This word is loops. And so you can say that, I don't know, like the, if you have to screw in a screw, you can say that the screw is loose. Or if you're about to lose one of your teeth, if it's wiggling around, that, that means your tooth is loose um, because it isn't firmly set. Um, so that's the difference between those two. Okay. Very good. Um, number seven, please. Who are we on now? Oh, um, wait. Uh, uh, Rasid, can you hear me? Uh, Rasid, are you there? Or Robert, are you there? Yes. Uh, will you please do number seven? Um, <clears throat> my mother has been. I'm not sure, but I bet on lying. The first. No. The it's. Lying it's is. Hell. What do you think it is? Lying is a long, in a long ter in a long time, lying. What did you say? I bet on the first. On the first one, okay. Um, oh, Rasid, yes, I, I know it was your turn. I'm sorry, but I didn't hear, I thought you couldn't hear me. Sometimes um, I'm talking to people and they just can't hear me, so we moved on, but you can do the next one. Um, sorry. Um, well, I think it, uh, I think Rasid is, is right. I think it's the second one. Um, the third one is when you um, is when you're you're telling a lie. When you're telling a lie, that's what it means when you're lying. And the um, but the second one, my mother has been laying in bed all morning. That is um, that's how you say that you know she's been sleeping all morning or whatever. Nice. So very good. B. Um, okay, receipt. Can you please do number eight? I don't, I don't know, receipt. If you, you're not muted. Ah, your mic doesn't work. Okay, very good. Doesn't matter. Just um, go ahead and type it in. She has apparently found it difficult to accept the circumstances. Exactly. You're right. It's the first one. Um, the second one. The first one means to accept. Uh, to accept something, accept a gift, or accept the situation if it's you know kind of hard to accept if it's something difficult. Um, the second one, accept, means I like everyone except for this person here, or I would I would be happy to go to any place for vacation except this place. It means um, yeah, it means but exactly. Very good. All right, it looks like we're back to the uh, beginning. Alison, would you please do number nine? Yes. She apparently doesn't care about its origins in a printed day. It's the second. You're right. It's the second one. Um, this is a good way to remember this because this is another one that's, that's always, con it's a confusable. It's something that you're always thinking, how oh, did I spell that right? How do I spell that? Um, so think about it this way. Think about his, um, her, and his. These are the three, like, possessive pronouns. So you can say his camera, her camera, or its camera. It, th this is, his is the masculine, her is the feminine, and its is the neutral. And so if you remember those three as a group, you will remember that this one doesn't have an apostrophe. Because um, his doesn't have an apostrophe, her doesn't have an apostrophe, if this doesn't have an apostrophe either. So that's how I remember it. Um, and Elson is right. It's with an apostrophe is it is. Um, very good. But it's confusing because, like, when you're thinking, like, what is the quality of it? It has a certain quality. So its quality, you'd think that you'd put an I-T apostrophe S, but that isn't. 
Um, um, Rusty, you can if you wish. Um, that's very nice. So um, thank you for joining us. Um, but you can also participate through through chat if you'd like to do that. Um, it's really up to you. Um, yeah, no problem. Let's see. We're going to go on to number ten now, um, and this is with um, with Gida. 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 Sorry. It's okay. So number ten. It's usually hotter than this in July. I think it's the second one. I always confuse these two. <laughs> this is this is confusing, and um, and it's the first one. It's the first. Yes. Yeah, huh. and um, it's always when you're comparing, it's always that first one. Then okay. usually how to than this. Um, then that's good. then yes, I understand. And then is um, I don't know. It's kind of like a time thing. So like yeah, it's it for later or yeah, exactly. Has that sense of doing it later. Okay. Very good. All right. Um, and if anyone has questions, feel free to type them in. But now we're on uh, Ismail. Uh, the politicians can seem to find an appropriate site for the new community college. The third one site yep. is the place. You're right. You're right. These are three um, uh, homophones. And let's just go over them. Site, this is kind of like a quotation. If you're writing a paper and you have to cite something, you're going to, um, this is the, the type of citation. Um, and that's a good way to remember it. Uh, yeah, good work, though. <laughs> um, exactly. Site is obviously the vision, and sites, the third one, is. Um, is the you know the physical grounds of something very good? Um, let's do number twelve, and then I found I think I found a website that we can look at the uh, the difference between interested and disinterested. Um, so there's always this one website called Grammar Girl is actually good. Um, but before we get to that, number twelve, please. Let's hear from the next person, which is uh, Louisa. I have a more deliberate to be. Hmm. I don't know. <laughs> I think maybe a uh, third one. Well, it, it, it's the first one. And okay. when something is. So I've never known the library to be quite this quiet. Quite is kind of uh, a way to say to this degree. I've never known the library to be at this level of quietness. So it's quite quiet. It's quite a nice day out. Means it's, oh, what a great day. Um, it's quite quiet. Means very quiet. Um, the second one is quiet, which means, you know, without noise. And the third one is quit, which means I'm going to quit my job if my boss tells me that one more time. Um, yeah, good work. Um, let's, let's quickly look at um, this Grammar Girl, because it's a great website. Um, and then we can, we can switch to doing, I don't know, more... Um, even more exercises about confusables. If there's a different topic you would like to cover, let me know. Um, I'll also give you this website because this is a lot of um, of these kind of fun topics or something you know something that people have can you know people confuse or whatever. So let's see, grammar girl, <laughs> disinterested versus uninterested. So this is a sh very short thing. Maybe we can have someone read this. So the next person is Philip. Would you please read the first paragraph? Uh, me? Excuse me. Can you give me like uh, where to start the first letter? 
Uh, the first, the first uh, word is at, an uninterested person is bored. That's the first segment of the sentence. Let, just just to let me know when I when when I you know that I should stop. Okay. And an uninterested person is bored, unconcerned or indifferent. Uh, this this interested person is impartial, unbiased, or has no stake in outcome. If you are on trial. Can I can I just interrupt you real quick and let's go over this word unbiased. 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 And unbiased. Yeah, and what a bias is is um, without like prejudice. <laughs> without um without uh, prejudice. Yeah, without prejudice exactly. Yeah, and um, but it doesn't it doesn't even mean. It doesn't have to be like a negative connotation. It can also be something like, um, you know, I'm I could be biased towards like the, say for example, you know, I'm a parent and I'm watching the the, the baseball game of my son. I'm going to be biased towards the towards my son's team. So I can't be a referee. If I was the umpire for that baseball game, I would be biased towards helping my son's team. Uh, that's a strike, even though it was, you know, clearly not a strike. Um, so that's what bias means. But anyways, um, yeah, very good. Can you please continue with uh, with if? Okay. Do you, know, you want let's... to what? I was gonna say let's have Robert read because um, he's he's the next person. Okay. Okay. If you're, on, if you're on trial, you want a disinterested judge. Unless you are a lawyer, the word you are generally looking for is uninterested. But a quick news search shows that disinterested, disinterested is frequently misused by the media. Here's how to use them properly. Squiggly, Squiggly couldn't help yawning. He was uninterested in fishing stories. The ex-wife can hardly be considered a dis disinterested party. Very good, thank you. Um, so let's just does everyone does everyone uh, get the difference here? Um, I'll just try and quickly sum it up. Um, so a disinterested person, when you use the word disinterested, you're, you're talking about has a, um, when, so, when there's a stake in something, a disinterested person, um, for some reason they want, they want something for their personal sake. For example, a disinterested judge. If you're on trial, you want a disinterested judge. That means you want a judge that isn't going to benefit from convicting you. Um, an uninterested judge would be a judge who's sitting there chewing gum, you know, probably reading a magazine, saying, "I, I couldn't care less. I'm switching professions. I, I really hate law." That would be an uninterested judge. And a disinterested judge is just a judge who doesn't have, um, you know, stake in a company that is on trial or something like that, or isn't friends with the uh, person who's speaking with you. Um, very good. Yeah, I just wanted to clarify that. I feel better now. Um, <laughs> so let's move on to something else. Should we do another round of confusables, or uh, what do you guys think? Does anyone have any anything in particular that they um, were wanting to do? Sorry, what did you say? Some exercises. Some exercises. Very good. Um, kind of, were you looking for something different than what we just did, or is that the type of exercise that you that you're looking for? Uh, different, 
So, Eloise, are you, are you like sick or something? I can't really hear you. You know, uh, teacher Christian, why don't we, every person here, we we pick up our question that we've been confused with, like grammatical problem, that we've been staggering with, that we are not sure with, any kind of grammatical problems. You know, a person, a question, and we can go over it. That sounds good. Let's do that. And I have a, let's have everyone, um, if there's, if they're struggling with something, anything, we just go ahead and type that in, we'll look at that, we'll answer it, and then, um, go on to the next thing. And to be honest, I think that we're going to have time after this, so, um, but for now, let's do this, um, this, <laughs> let's do this first. Um, so very good. Philip, let's start with you because um, it seems like you have something in particular you wanted to ask. And everyone else can kind of think about it and then we'll start with Elsa. Okay. <laughs> okay, <laughs> give me like 10 seconds. Okay, not a problem, not a problem. If anyone does have something, um, any area of grammar, we can start with you while Philip is still. Philip, is this the uh, is this the grammar sentence? Uh, you know, you can just go over the two sentences and give us the reason why the first or the second sentence correct one and. And you know, grammatically explain a little bit as sure. as clear as possible. So it's it's this. You might not remember. Um, so when you say you might not, it means it's possible that you don't. It's possible that you that you don't remember. Um, what about the second one? It's uh, it's wrong or acceptable or. Really, like a rare used in daily life. Yeah, it, it doesn't make as much sense. Um, yeah, you might, don't, you might, you might do not remember. Um, so you can say that you don't remember me, but you you usually don't say you might don't remember me. Um, okay, I think um, it might affect it by the like American speaker. You guys just speak, you know, it just in your head, and then just come out with the first intent more appropriate for you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's true. I, it's you know, we're definitely fluid. So uh, I'm fluent. I mean, so I I would say that I would say that if if I heard you might don't remember me. I would be a little confused, but what the first thing you wrote was perfectly great. It was, you might not remember me. Be sure to put the T at the end of might. Um, yeah. <laughs> Very good. Um, excellent. Does anyone else have anything in particular they wanted to go over? Just wait here for a second. Um, Looks like if somebody if something comes up, feel free to type it in. For now, it looks like um, no one can think of something. That's fine. Let's go on to um, some some confusables, but feel free to um, like to to send me something. That's totally fine. We can we can switch back to that if you have something um, that comes up. In the meantime, I'm waiting for this um, this grammar page to load. It's going very slow. Uh, I don't think anyone typing in the chat box. Yeah, I know it's. Uh, I think uh, you know, do you do you have anything else to teach me? I mean, like you have to clear before. 
Um, you know. Not have really. you, you know, we are pretty interesting in the if clause condition. You probably heard that a lot. Yeah, if clause condition. If clause condition. You know, I'm gonna um the next grammar class I teach, I'll I'll include that in there. Um, but uh, just so I can kind of you know include a a little bit of a better lesson on that. For now, I guess let's let's continue with these confusables. Um, and these, I'm looking at this this next quiz. It looks pretty difficult. Um, so I'll screen share that. Let's see. Let's see how uh, how it goes. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. So these, I would say, are a little bit uh, more difficult. So, who would like to go first? Uh, uh, Guido, would you like to go first? I can see. If it's not clear. Uh, you can see. Okay, maybe. Maybe now it's a little better. I'm supposed to, to find which word we have to put on the graphs. Uh, yes. Yeah, so, so the, yeah, exactly. So the please just um, read, starting with her remarks, and then just um, include the word you think it is. Her remarks seemed the second one, maybe. Well, it's the first one. The, the <laughs> I really don't know what word. these words mean. That's why I just picked one. Yeah, yeah. These are more difficult. Um, insipid is kind of like um, definitely a little more. It's not a good thing. Um, an insipid remark is something like, "Why would you say that?" Um, so that's why they're. While they're ignoring these remarks because they're insipid. Um, an incipient means kind of like the when you're just beginning. So the incipient um, phase of a plan, that's what the first one means. Um, okay. So yeah, this is the hard one, and you you don't see these words often. These are these are upper level words that you could use in an essay, but you're probably not going to use in, you know when you're just talking to someone. Um, very good. Uh, the second one, though, is good to know. Let's go on to, uh, to Ismail. Could you, what do you think of the second one? Yeah. Um, just a second. Okay. Uh, we try a price of present developments in the economy. I think it's the second one. So we try to keep the president apprised of recent developments in the economy. You're right. So informed. Exactly. Um, so keep me apprised means um, you know keep me informed of what you're planning on doing. Um, but it's definitely more of a formal sense. It's more you know someone apprises the president or something. Appraised is kind of like um, to assess the value of something, to, to get some new phrases, is kind of to say, oh, I wonder how much this is. Like if you find an antique or something, and I'd be like, oh my gosh, I think this is worth like a lot of money. You can go to a specialist and get it appraised. And uh, there are some TV shows that are really funny um, and just interesting about that, where people like go around and they, they just buy old antiques or whatever, and then the whole TV show is about, you know, getting them appraised and then hearing the story behind the antiques. It's interesting. It's pretty interesting. Um, very good. Let's go on to, to number three. Uh, this one I think is also more relevant. And who's next? Luisa. Yeah, what is the climatic event in, in, in this short story? Uh, I think it's the first one because I don't know the word 
Let's take him on board. <laughs> That's good. Um, so I'm mad. I'm mad. So, climactic is um, is talking about the climax of a story. Um, and climatic is talking about the weather, the climate. Um, so, what is the climactic event? It's the second one because you're talking about the climax of a story. Uh, you know, the climax. The climax of a story is like when, you know, the when Scooby Doo like reveals the mask of of the bad guy. So that's what climactic is. Um, and climatic would would definitely be more to describe, you know, what's the weather like. So the second one. I couldn't hear what you said, but I I think you said the second one, and that's right. <laughs> Um, very good, very good. All right, wow, epigram, epigraph. I have no idea. Um, I'm gonna look up the definition. Um, he chose some lines from Shakespeare's sonnets as the oh epigram or epigram. Wow, this is interesting. I see Ismail is is typing. Do you have something? Okay. Ah, theology. Very good. <laughs> um, let's see. Well, I found an answer to uh, to this question to number four. So, an epigraph is something inscribed on a um, on a building or something. And an epigram, it's I think it's the thing that comes at the beginning of the story. Let me just double check on that, but I'm pretty sure an epigram is um, uh, this is what the definition says: is it? a a piety way of a piety saying or remark expressing an idea in a clever and amusing way. A short poem, especially a satirical one, having a witty or ingenious. So an epigram. Um, this little poem um, would come at the beginning of his essay. Um, very good. And an epigraph. Let me look at the definition of this one. Epigraph. Oh my gosh. And an ep so the correct answer is epigraph. Um, it can either be an inscription on a building, statue, or coin, but it can also be a short quotation or saying at the beginning of a book or chapter intended to suggest this thing. So an epigraph. Comes at the beginning of a of a text. An epigram is what's found, um, or it's like a short little poem that's witty. Um, so confusing. Oh my gosh. Uh, it's, it's an epigram. Yep. Ismail, you are correct. Um, terrific. Great. Um. Looks like we're on Philip again. Philip, please do number five. Philip, can you hear me? Uh, number five. Yep. When you are finished, process to the next part of the exam. Uh, the second one. You're right. You're right. Right. So to, to precede something, the first one is to come before it. So, for example, um, George W. Bush preceded Barack Obama with the U.S. presidency. Is how you could use that. It just means to be the one that came before. Um, oftentimes, it's in a similar role or something like that. It, it, it takes place when you're talking about one subject, and um, so one thing precedes another. To proceed, you're right, um, and you just say proceed. Proceed, proceed. Those are that's the differences between those words. It's very confusing. Uh, I mean, it's it's very subtle. You can say proceed, proceed. Um, but eventually, you'll, you'll kind of get the ear to, to hear it. I would imagine. Uh, that's the difficulty I have with Spanish is that um, just the sounds sometimes they're too fast for me, and I can't tell these subtle differences. But uh, don't worry, you will get it for sure. Um, so to proceed. 
um, is to just continue on, just like you said. Proceed to the next part of the exam, or proceed to the next line if you're waiting at the immigration office or something like that. Um, great. Number six. Who is um, next? It's Robert. <clears throat> the, the, the first is to, is, is uh, not not moving, and the second is uh, is all things like writing paper, paper etc. And yep. and we need some new stationery. The second for exactly. our office. That was very well said. Um, if anyone has any questions, um, but. Robert, explain the difference between the two. Very good. Um, all right, let's go on to number seven. Then. Uh, Sheen, can you hear me? Yeah. Perfect. Uh, seven, please. Number second. Uh, he was mad visually for his years. Uh, second one. You're right. Um, if something is specially made. It means it's custom designed, and especially. Oh, excuse me. Especially. Hmm. It's interesting because when I say the key was made especially for his use, it kind of makes sense, but it doesn't really. Um, so I think you're right with the with the second one because. Especially seemed key, um, and the key was made especially for his use. Would all like an would be like an adjective, uh, an adverb. It's kind of say, for example, well, um, there are two people in the house, or there's one person um, who's living in the house, and they have a guest. Um, and they make a key for the guest, that would be, it would be the key was made especially um, confusing with this. Um, this one, why do you think? Because especially for him, not especially for him. I guess I'm, I guess I see your point. I'm looking at the sentence differently. Um, I was originally looking at the kind of how the key could be specially, you know, specially right. Um, because it's for um, especially for his use. So the difference is if you're talking about how the key is made. Or if you're talking about especially for his use. And I think that this sentence you're talking about especially for his use. So it's the first one, especially. Definitely, this is a difficult, very difficult se section. Mm -hmm. Great. Let's go on to, uh, to number eight. Aren't um, phones, but they are. Good words to know. Let's see. Alberto, can you hear me? Alberto. I'm hearing um, some alien noises. Like UFOs are invading. I don't know if that's Albert. Yeah. Very good. Alberto, can you hear me or no? Yes, I can hear you. Number eight for us. To be honest, I, I don't know. Yeah, well, this is an interesting thing. Okay, nothing happened with your connection, I think. What did you say? With your connection, something happen because it's too hard to listen to you. Yeah, 
So, number eight, I'm going to go with that it's extemporaneous. Um, even though they both have very similar meanings, which means basically, um, more or less, kind of, um, you don't have a speech written, you just, you get up and you say something. That's kind of what they both mean here. Uh, um, so when Lincoln was actually well prepared for his extemporaneous remarks, this is saying that um, he he had prepared for them. Um, so I think that I don't really know how to explain the difference here, but impromptu that. When I hear impromptu, it kind of makes me think like he was he was kind of walking along. All of a sudden, he had the idea to speak, and he got up on a on a soapbox and started speaking. And that's that's what I think of when I think of impromptu. And I think of, you know, he knows he just doesn't. He he knows um, more or less what he wants to say. I haven't written that word for a word. I think that. Uh, is the difference between extemporaneous and impromptu? Great. Let's. Um, okay. Yeah, Louise, I see. I see what you're uh, typing here. Does anyone? Uh, where that? Just. Uh, that's fine with me. Um, great. Titus, how did you, can you just explain um, how you know that? Mm. What do you mean just? <laughs> Like, can we Um, kind of. It, it's it is a little difficult to hear, but I think, uh, you, I think I can hear. Yeah, I need my voice. Sorry for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, uh, in culture, I mean, Sounds not good, but uh, it seems funny. Uh, first word uh, with a word in it uh, sounds more better than second word. Yeah. Okay. Great. It's definitely a confusing, a confusing distinction. But I think that's the that was the theme of today is confusing distinctions. Of I don't know. Words that appear similar but have different meanings. Anyways, um, yeah, I think that's an interesting uh, topic to cover. So I'm glad you guys um, all participated. Thank you very much. We're at the end of the hour here. Um, so I'd like to thank all you guys. Thank you, Robert. Um, and uh, I hope to see you guys back around. Oh, I'll put in my Facebook in case you want to stay connected with me. Um, or you can also. Just come back to one of my classes. I teach um, most days on Thursday, Friday, uh, Saturday, Sunday, I think. So, anyways, thank you guys. Um, thank you. I'll see you guys back around. Thank you. Yeah, thank Bye. You. Bye.